brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Daily Smith Vigil Swat Devotional Podcast. My name is Victoria Iyak and I thank you so much for joining us today. Without further ado, let us start with prayer as usual. Father Lord God, King of Glory, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word together. Help us read your word and study it, put it in practice and follow you. And may your Holy Spirit have this moment. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. title of this teaching is His Glory and Ours. His Glory and Ours. We are going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 to verse 58 and we are reading from the New King James Version. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 and now 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 to verse 58. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive until it dies, and what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but make make grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, men. Another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in corruption, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit, however, the spirit child is not first. But the natural and afterward the spiritual, the first man was of the earth, made of dust, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust, and is the heavenly man. So also are those who are heavenly, and as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does Corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in the victory. O death, where is your sting? O harvest, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Even we will always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, as we said previously, the title of the teaching is His Glory and Ours. As we just read from the verses like 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 to verse 58, you will understand from these verses that when the Lord is going to come, um, our bodies shall not, the bodies that we have now shall not enter heaven. They will never reach heaven. They are terrestrial and everything terrestrial will come to an end on this earth. What is going to enter heaven? Your spirit, your soul, and this the new body that is going to be given to you. A new body, like, yeah, a completely brand new body. That body made for heaven, you know, as we just read. So I think this could be an encouragement to anybody who suffered from anything in the physical body, like abuse or stuff like that, to understand that this body... 
and the body of sin has been done away with. Like if this body, whether it is the things that you that you did and repented of, or the, the things that were done to you in the flesh, you know that flesh, that body is not entering heaven. Anyways, it's gonna be your soul and your spirit and the new body that you're gonna receive from the Lord. Um, because the terrestrial, when you were terrestrial being, you had the terrestrial body, but you will be like celestial, you have your celestial body. So, as the scripture says, um, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This body that you have, this flesh that you have, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But your new body, your incorruptible body, your immortal body will inherit the kingdom of God, like with your soul and your spirit, if, you're, if you are saved, so to say. Um, next thing to say is like, as we, we, we're, we're following a trend, like Smith Gerswad is following a trend here, and he's trying to explain something here. Um, your flesh is not, your flesh, the body that you see now, the temple that you see now is not entering heaven. You have a new body. But another thing that you have to know is that Jesus is not coming back for, because of course, when he will come back, there are people who will still be alive and then their bodies are going to be changed, like, for them to, like, you see, as the verse says, uh, let's get to the verse. Uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last transpect, no, that's 51. Behold, I tell you, mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So we shall all be changed. Some will have a new body, like, from the fact that they were, they had been dead, but they will have a new body. Dead physically, but others will be alive, like, completely alive, like physically alive uh, when Jesus will come back and they are going to be changed and we are all like, we are all going to receive an incorruptible body. As the word says, 52, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So there is a new body. That's the point here. Now, another thing that you have to know is that when like, like when Christ is coming back for his church, he's not, as we said, he's not coming back for the flesh, you know, but for what he put inside of you. For, and actually the real you is not your flesh, but your spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. That's the real you. The real you is not the part that you see, it's your spirit. And you have, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. And here we're talking about glory. So many people like have an idea of what glory is, which it is not. In pictures and drawings of like saints, we we picture glory as some light, some light halo, which surrounds the person's head or like the person's body, something like that. But glory is not something external, so to say, it is something from within. Glory is not about um, how people see you. How people see you may be a reflection of the glory that is from within, but real glory is not from the outside, your clothes or like the impression that you give to people. It starts from the inside. It actually originates from the inside. The glory of the Holy Spirit It's about like what is inside of you, aka what's in your spirit. Are you born again? Are you, and then, then your soul, are you transformed by the renewal of your mind? Is it truth inside of you? Is it grace inside of you? Is it life inside of you? Is it Christ? When, you, when we see you, do we see Jesus? Because ultimately in this world, glory has been defined as something external, from the posture of someone, from their, like how rich they are, how influential they are, how much money they have, how much resources they have. But it is not about that. It is definitely not about that. Glory is expressive. Glory is like you will see glory in your life 
how you will be a glorious person, so to say, to the extent to which you reflect Christ, to the extent to which, as the verse says, uh, first, second Corinthians chapter, chapter 3, 18, but we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are trans- being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just by, as by the Spirit of the Lord. So glory is not, it's not something external. It's about how much you reflect Christ, how much you live up to who he says you are in Christ Jesus. It's about Christ. It's not about, it's not about you, so to say, but it's about like how much of Christ is seen in you. What's your lifestyle? Who are you deep down inside? Are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Christ, a disciple of Jesus, one who obeys him, one who displays love, truth, kindness, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Lord, the life of the Lord. This is like the word says, as he is, so are we in this world. This is the that glory that we are talking about. How much are you like Jesus? And in the spirit of God, you've been recreated in his image, you're perfectly like him. But the degree to which you renew your mind to this truth, to this reality is the degree to which you are going to experience this glory and people are going to see this glory because it's not you that they'll be seeing it is jesus that they'll be seeing through you so so many people want to see the glory of god the thing it is something external it's the thing is how much you fast how much you how much how many hours you spend in prayer how many how many good deeds you do but it's it's first from the inside. It's first a change that God does in you from inside. And when you realize who you are in Christ Jesus and that you surrender to who he is and that you 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 die to self and you decide Christ must increase and I must decrease, as John the Baptist said, you decide that it is only Jesus that's gonna be seen through your life, then his glory is going to shine. So I'll conclude with this quote by Smith because what glory is not an outside halo. Glory is an inward conception. Glory is not an outside halo. Glory is an inward conception. So let us pray. Father Lord God Almighty, we pray for each one listening to this right now. We pray that with an unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, that each of us will be transformed into the same image as Christ from glory to glory, just as by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much for listening from the from start to finish, from the beginning to the end. If you've been edified by this teaching, subscribe and share this on social media. Subscribe so that you receive notifications when there's a new Uh, podcast episode say so that you edify other people through this and also make yourself available tomorrow to listen to the next episode by god's grace it's one new episode every single day by the grace of the lord and finally if you have prayer requests or testimonies or questions you can contact me on instagram or on facebook dr victoria eagle so thank you so much god bless you and goodbye